What's up guys and welcome to the channel. My name is Micah and today we are answering every question about exhaust for ZX6Rs. So this video is going to apply to any model ZX6R 2009 and newer. Behind us we have a 2024 ZX6R. So in this video we're going to be doing a lot. We are going to answer every question having to do with servo buddies and engine lights. If you need one for your ZX6R, what's gonna trigger an engine light? How to get that engine light off? We're gonna talk about catalytic converters. If you need one or not, what happens when you have one? What happens when you don't have one? We're gonna talk about slip-on exhaust systems that retain the factory expansion resonator chamber and ones that delete it. There's just so many unanswered questions and misinformation floating around out there about exhaust for these ZX6Rs. There is so many questions that I still have and we're gonna answer them all in this video here. So without further ado, let's rip into it, guys. So the first thing that we're gonna do is remove our factory muffler here. So in your factory exhaust, you're gonna see these two cables right here. And so those are running to the servo. It's a little butterfly valve that's gonna be in your exhaust. So the computer controls an actuator up under your seat, which toggles those cables, and it controls that butterfly valve. And that valve just controls how much exhaust it's letting go by. It kinda controls your back pressure a little bit. So there is a ton of questions out there on this servo. And if you need a servo buddy, if you unhook it, if you just unhook the cables from your servo motor and leave the servo plugged in, is that gonna throw an engine code? And these are questions that I don't have the answers to, but we're gonna have the answers in about 60 seconds. So what I'm gonna do is just unhook the cables from our exhaust and from the servo motor up under the seat. We're gonna leave the factory servo plugged in and we're gonna see if we get an engine light if we remove the cables but still have the actual servo plugged in. Everything that you see or that we have in this video is gonna be linked in the description in case you guys wanna get it yourself. Some of it's from eBay, some of it's from Amazon, but everything's down below. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this little cover here that's kind of over our servo motor. So there's just two Allen head bolts here. We're gonna take those out and this should come right off. There's kind of just a little tongue here that slides under this rubber spot on the muffler. All right, so now we've got the servo motor exposed here, so I'll bring you in close. You can see those cables. There's just a 10 millimeter nut on either of those, so we're just gonna loosen those, and then we'll slip those cables up out of that little bracket. So I've got the nuts on here loosened up. They're kind of off of those cables, but the cables are too tight. I can't really pull them out of there, so now we're gonna get up under the seat, get to the servo up there, and see what we see. Now, to remove the driver's seat on this ZX6, there's just gonna be a little spot for your key to fit, just kind of right under the tail. You'll put your key in there, turn that, lift up on the driver's seat, and that will come out. You're gonna find a small little cable right here, kind of towards the back near your bracket. You will pull this little cable, and that is going to release your passenger seat. So now we've got the servo exposed up here. So we'll see if we can't loosen up those cables and get that off of there. So we've got just a little wire clip that kind of goes around the back side of these cables and to this bracket. So I think just a flat blade screwdriver is gonna be able to kind of pry that off of there. Just get it from one side, get it from the other side. That looks like that'll work. All right. Now that little wire came off of there. So we took our clip off, but our cables are still pretty tight in there. So you'll go under your seat, you will find your servo cable, and you will pull these pieces of rubber up and you will expose a couple nuts here. So we're gonna loosen these, we're gonna twist those together. It's gonna put some slack in our cables and so then we can unhook those from the servo motor. Yep, so that one perfectly slipped out of there. And I'm sure the other one will do the same here. We'll just unhook those cables like so. So now that the cables are unhooked from our servo motor, I'm just gonna kind of fish these out here. Oh, and there's a little plastic clip in here that's kind of holding everything on still. Well, so in looking in here at this, it's kind of just a U-shaped clamp that goes around all your cables and it hinges from the outside here. So it looks like I can just take a flat blade screwdriver and kind of unhook that outside part and it should release our cable. Oop. 
Just like that. Perfecto. So now that we've got those cables loose up top, we can kind of slip them out of their little spot down below here it looks like. Well, and so actually after thinking about it, in no scenario are we gonna keep these servo cables. Um, and so versus fishing them out through everything, I'm just gonna take the easy way. I'm just gonna snip the cables here. Take these ends off so I can just pull them straight up and out. Now, if you're trying to save your servo cables, yeah, fish them out and be all careful, but we certainly are not. All right, so now that we have the servo cables completely out, we still have our servo motor up there. It is still plugged in and everything, but nothing is on our little butterfly valve in the exhaust. So you will see that there's a spring on this that holds it one way or the other it holds it open all the time. So if you remove your servo cables, that butterfly valve is left completely open. So now, the first biggest question that I have that I do not know the answer to is with us still having that servo in the tail, it's still plugged in, we haven't done anything, we just took the cables out so that that little wheel up there that turns and actuates those cables it's not hooked up to any cables, but will the computer be able to tell that we removed the cables, that it doesn't have any resistance in there? Uh, and will we get an engine light or will the engine light just stay off since we haven't touched the servo and we've left it plugged in? I have seen people online that say it does throw an engine code. I've heard people say that it doesn't. I've heard people say that for like the 2019 and newer, it will throw an engine code, but for the older ones, it doesn't. I've just heard everything you can imagine. So let the guessing game be over. The servo cables are off. Servo is still plugged in. Let's put the key, I'll take it out of our tail here. Key is in the ignition. It is turned on. We're gonna fire up this motorcycle and see if we get a check engine light. No check engine light. There it is, the proof. No check engine light. So if you do not, I'll turn our bike off here so you can hear me better. So if you do not unplug the servo, if you just take the cables out of it, you will not get an engine code. I think where people get the engine code is that they unplug the servo motor so the computer knows that you have no servo plugged in versus if you just keep the servo motor plugged in but take the cables out, no check engine lights. So, we are not gonna need our servo buddy, which I ordered for this bike, but we'll just send it back, we'll return it. The servo buddy we got was about 55, 60 bucks, so 100%, we'll just send that back. We do not need that for our brand new 2024 ZX6R. So now we're gonna go about removing the factory muffler. So there's a little clamp right here. So we're gonna loosen that. It's gonna be a 10 millimeter. Um, and then on this passenger foot peg there, you're gonna see another little bolt. So that's gonna be a 10 millimeter on the side facing us. And then on the back side there, it's gonna be a 13. So we'll pop that off as well. So we've got our nut off the back side. We'll just pull our bolt out there. Oh, another washer on the back side. And then our whole slip on here, our muffler is gonna be loose. So I think we can kind of just slightly twist that. Voila, so the factory muffler, this thing's like 15 pounds. So this is off the bike now. So, and I'll just say something quick for everybody who has a check engine light on your ZX6R 2009 and newer, obviously we don't because of the way that we did things. But if you do have a check engine light, to get that off, what you can do is there's this adapter that will plug into just any standard OBD2 uh, car scanner but it's an adapter then that will hook into your Kawasaki. So if we look under the seat here, oh, let me fold my camera up, you will see this little wire here with this little red box on it, it has a cap on it. 
So that is gonna be your computer engine scanner port. So the end of that is a little six pin connector. So this adapter will hook into that six pin connector and then connect to like your what, 21 pin OBD2 port or whatever it is. So I will put a link to the one that we ordered. Obviously we didn't get an engine code, which we're actually gonna return ours, you know, since I didn't use it. So I'll link those parts that I got in the description, even though I'm not gonna open the ones out of the boxes that we got and show you them. But the Servo Buddy is $55. Uh, the OBD2 adapter that will hook into your ZX6R is 19. So now what we're gonna do is I have two different link pipes I ordered. So one is just shorter. It hooks right into this factory resonator expansion chamber. This is not your catalytic converter, contrary to popular belief. Your catalytic converter is actually right here. It's gonna be in the header uh, of your bike. So that doesn't unbolt. There's no way to take that out. You can get in there and drill it out with a drill, a chisel and a hammer. I've seen a lot of different things. Well, and so in playing around with the different mid pipes, the slip on that we had, I could not notice a difference in sound between putting the link pipe on the factory expansion chamber and having that slip on kind of come up uh, along the same place that the factory muffler was, just bolting to the peg right there. I didn't notice that it was really any quieter or louder. I mean, in theory, it's gotta be just a little bit quieter, you know, than having a link pipe that deleted this expansion chamber. But if you look at it, you can kind of see the light straight through there. I mean, the air flows straight through. There's a couple holes in there that you can see air could go into, but as far as like a sound muffling or a decibel killer type quality, this doesn't really have much of one. So we're just gonna continue with doing our other link pipe that deletes this because this weighs about five pounds. So I definitely wanna drop the weight that this has. So now to remove the expansion chamber here, all we need to do is just take out this one bolt, a hex head bolt, kind of on the belly pan, the lower fairing there, just so that can move outwards just a little bit. So that'll be enough that there's a bolt in here on our clamp that holds this expansion chamber to the header. So it's a 10 millimeter, we'll be able to slip under here and get that out. And then there's also an Allen head bolt uh, that goes from the expansion chamber. It's a little bracket, it holds it up onto the frame just for support. But we'll be able to get at both those two bolts and then we can kind of fish this out of there. It's a little tricky from what I've seen. You know, you have to have it at the right angle and kind of pull it back towards the tire, but I don't think we'll have a problem. All right, so we slipped our ratchet kind of behind this fairing there, whoop, just like that to loosen up that 10 millimeter clamp bolt. So now we can just go in the side. Yeah, it looks like that little uh, hex head bolt that holds our resonator to the frame. Oh, it's just a six millimeter but it is on there. Might need to get an actual Allen key on that. Well, and so I was able to slide an Allen key in there and then that short end that's sticking out, I'm just gonna take kind of a, a deep socket and an extension, put it on there, get a little leverage. Oh baby, that is on there, holy cow. Get a little bit different angle here so we can really wrench on that. Finally, it loosened up. That is on there. Holy cow. <laughs> well, and drop a comment. Let me know if your guys' was on there that tough. My goodness. All right, that bolt is all loosened up. Pull it out of there. Oh, that's kind of a long sucker. All right, so now I can feel our expansion chamber is totally loose there. So now we just gotta kind of fish that off of there. Work this out. Well, and it looks like I'm either gonna have to go down or up with it. All right, there it is, she came out. So just out and down is kind of the key for that. But if you're careful when you do that, so there is gonna be a carbon exhaust gasket ring, get you in there. So that ring sits inside of here, but if you're careful, uh, you know, you can leave that ring intact so you don't need another one of those. Otherwise, I think for our link pipe and everything, you know, you would need a new carbon ring if you really bang that one up as you're getting that uh, expansion chamber out of there. Well, and so actually, I'll just show you guys that catalytic converter up in that head pipe since we have the expansion chamber off. So kind of coming in here, 
if you wanted to drill out your catalytic converter, that is it right in there. So just in your header and that's kind of a disc. So there's gonna be two of those discs that you'll have to drill out. I think they're less than an inch thick. Uh, they almost just look like a puck and there's gonna be two of them. So in your factory cat there, you're gonna have one of those discs right here. Uh, there's gonna be a second one back here. And then your O2 sensor is behind that, so you don't really have to worry about that. But if you want to drill out the cat from your factory header, you're gonna go through two different catalytic converter pucks that are in that header. But if you wanna retain this, if you want to have a slip-on that kinda of goes up alongside your motorcycle here and bolts to the foot peg, you know, I'll have the link for that link pipe, you know, and a link to the slip-on that we use, but that'll take you to a bunch of different slip-ons. So we're just gonna keep moving along and get to the finished product, the finished exhaust that we want. So now here's gonna be the link pipe that we got that will eliminate the expansion resonator chamber on the bike. So it's kind of cool, it's this twisty, curvy pipe. And what I like about this is that curve there, that 360 is gonna add just a slight amount of back pressure. So we want that back pressure a little bit so we don't completely lose our low end or mid range torque. We're not decatting our factory header, so I think back pressure is gonna be fine. I think we could drill out the factory cap from our header and then just have our slip on on this. So we'd have a straight through slip on exhaust, decatted header. And I think with that 360 curve that this link pipe has, I don't think we'd be worried about a back pressure issue. I don't think we'd lose any low or mid range torque or have to get a tune immediately afterwards. But I don't have a dyno here to test that. So just our thoughts. So this is the angle that your finished pipe is going to sit in. If you try and put it in at that angle, you're just gonna have a world of problem. What you will do is just turn this pipe 90 degrees here and slip it in just like that and then turn it into place. That's what you will do, it's super easy. Turn it 90 degrees, pull it out, put it in, no fights, no problems. Well, and I think knowing how easy it is to put this on kind of just from the side there, I think we're just gonna put our slip on exhaust that we got on the link pipe and then we will fit the slip-on exhaust with our link pipe up in there and turn it into place. So, and then the slip-on exhaust we got, let me brush it off a little bit here, is just a no-name eBay slip-on muffler. This one doesn't have a decibel killer. Typically, I like those ones that have a decibel killer that you can remove and take out. But if you click on the link in the description that I put for this exhaust, in the related items or similar things, there's a bunch of other slip-ons. It's kind of an endless rabbit trail, rabbit hole that you get on. You'll see the price range from $24 all the way up to like 100, depending on what exhaust you're getting. This specific one cost us $35. So, we are just gonna fit this on to, well, there we go, on to our link pipe there. We'll kind of get that all seated on there good and then we'll put our springs, you know, that hold this exhaust on and we'll just fit this all into the bike. Well, and so what I'm gonna do in order to mount our uh, link pipe, you know, we've got our slip on on there and everything, you know, we have our spot where it mounts to the frame in the same position that our resonator box mounted and I have the bolt from our resonator, but that bolt went through the little mounting spot and there's a nut on here. So it's kind of secured in this little metal housing. So I'm just gonna kind of bend that housing a little bit, um, bend that kind of up and out and I'm gonna get that nut out of there so I can use that with just the factory bolt to hold our new link pipe on. Well, and so all I did to get this out is I kind of just bent out or bent up one side of that little kind of housing for that nut. So then you can just slide your factory nut right out of there. So we'll put that aside. So now we have the factory nut with our bolt. So we can kind of put our link pipe in here uh, on the bike and then we'll get that secured. We'll get it clamped down. All right. So that's gonna roughly be kind of the look of our new exhaust on there. So that angle, it's slightly diagonal, it comes back, 
you know, you wouldn't have any problem if you have a passenger, their foot's on the foot peg. You know, it's way below that. It's not shooting exhaust or flames, anything at the passenger's foot. Well, so as I'm putting this on here, we'll just talk about catalytic converters really quick. But, uh, so if you still have the factory catalytic converter in your bike, no matter what slip on exhaust you do, um, your bike is not gonna shoot fireballs or flames, anything like that. You need to have the cat eliminated in order to shoot flames because I'm sure everybody, all of you have seen that online. People shooting fireballs and flames with their ZX6. Now most of your full exhaust systems are not gonna have a catalytic converter. And so really any full exhaust, yeah, you're gonna shoot flames. Even before you have a tune, you know, your bike's just gonna be able to shoot flames and fireballs. No slip on system, no matter what it is, is gonna shoot flames unless you decat, you know, your factory header. So if we had got in there with a drill and drilled out those two catalytic converter pucks uh, that are in the header there, yeah, we would be shooting flames and fireballs out of this brand new slip on exhaust. Since we left the catalytic converter in there, for now, we might drill it out. But for now, so we will not be shooting any flames or fireballs. But if I get bored with this, or if we order a full system, I will 100% drill out that cat, you know, before we put on the full system, just to see how the bike handles, performs, sounds. So our mounting bolt for the link pipe is all tightened. So now I'll just kind of get under here and tighten that clamp bolt that holds our uh, link pipe to the header here. All right, that is nice and tight as well. So we will put our bolt back in for that lower side fairing. So everything should be finished and complete. We'll put the seats back on our bike and then we'll fire it up here and see how this thing sounds. You know, as far as the prices of all this, I told you that this uh, slip on exhaust, just the muffler itself was $35. These curly Q link pipes that hook right onto the factory header that eliminate that expansion chamber and resonator, these are about $55. So I see them $55 to $65. I was able to get one for $55, bucks, but $55 to $65 is what that's going to cost. Links in the description. And then if you want to do just that small link pipe that hooks on to the factory resonator box, and then goes straight to your muffler, your slip-on of choice. Those are about $40. So this whole exhaust job, since we found out that if we take the cables off the servo, we do not need a servo buddy, you know, the way we did things, we never threw an engine code because we never unplugged the servo. So we have a full slip-on exhaust job that eliminated our expansion chamber and resonator complete for $90 right on the nose. $90, $90. All right, so now the moment of truth. How our $35 eBay muffler sounds on our $55 link pipe. Here it goes. That is beyond cool. Everything worked out great. I figured it would, but it's just, like I said, there's so much misinformation online. Literally everybody said that I would need a servo buddy, 
you know, if I put any sort of a slip on exhaust on this 24 ZX6R, clearly not the case. That is literally false. You do not need a servo buddy on a 24 ZX6R for a slip on exhaust. Just unhook your cables, never unplug the servo. You're good to go. So yeah, I'm loving the sound, loving this bike so far. Check out our full review of this motorcycle. It is awesome. So we're gonna have plenty of videos coming up where we're riding the bike. Now you can actually hear it on our vlogs and videos so great stuff coming your way so like the video if this helped you out subscribe if you guys want to see more and until next time have a wonderful night